So the, the mission statement of the Indiana-Kentucky Synod is empowering, equipping, and encouraging one another to make Christ known. To make Christ known. We really get that phrase from the ELCA. It was one of the taglines for the ELCA, is making Christ known. Now, I always thought for years and years that that phrase, making Christ known, meant there's people out there that don't know about Jesus. And it's my job and your job and everybody else's job to to take Jesus to them, to let them learn and know about Jesus, to, to give them the stories of Jesus, to tell them about the cross and the resurrection, to, to share the Jesus we know with them. The first step in being able to do that is to know Jesus. And I, I wonder how many of us are ready to stand with John the Baptist and to actually say, you know, I don't know him. I don't know who he is. John the Baptist knew who Jesus was. He was his cousin. He knew who Jesus was. He had baptized him. He knew who Jesus was. But remember last week when Jesus wanted to be baptized by John? John wanted to have nothing to do with it. Because Jesus wasn't the Messiah John thought he was. Jesus wasn't out there baptizing with fire and brimstone. He wasn't using his axe to chop down the trees. He wasn't, didn't have his pitchfork in his hand like John thought. He didn't know Jesus. John was being honest. And this week, again, he's saying I, to the crowds, I, I didn't know him. He's confessing his own ignorance. But John said the Spirit descended on him, and the words that the one who sent me said that when I see that, I know he will be the one who will baptize with the Spirit. He will be the one who is the Son of God. He will be the one who is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And so John learned that because he was inspired and because it was revealed to him. I confess to you that there are times I don't know Jesus. And I know I don't know Jesus because I look at what I say and what I do. I check out my behaviors against what Jesus might say or do or what Jesus might expect of me. And I wither compared to that. It was a wonderful confession that we used at the beginning of the liturgy to talk about the ways in which we don't follow our Lord and Savior as we have been called to do. Ways in which we reveal to ourselves and to the world around us that we don't know him. And so we count on something to help remind us, to make us remember who he is and who we are as his followers, as his disciples, as his redeemed, as his chosen ones. We need to be reminded. And for that we come Sunday after Sunday. That's one of the ways where we get reminded about who Jesus is and what Jesus is all about. But as John the Baptist, in the face of encountering who Jesus really was, turned around and testified, is that what we do when we go out the door? Do we go out the door having met Jesus here, having been forgiven and renewed and fed and nourished? Do we go out the door and become evangelists? I don't know you well enough to answer that. You can answer that for yourselves. But I do know well enough what the Lutheran church has looked like over the years. And Lutheran evangelism has been the kind that has heard the words of Jesus when he came down off the Mount of Transfiguration. Tell no one anything. And for the most part, that's what we have done. We don't speak it. We don't talk about Jesus. Jesus invites the two disciples later in the gospel reading to come and see where he's staying so that he might indeed teach them and they might grow. And it doesn't take them long before, in verses later on, they're turning right around and saying to other people, come and see. They have become evangelists. Now, Lutherans as a whole are really good at social ministry. We can reach out to the poor and the suffering and the hungry. And I know here in the Indiana, Kentucky Synod, we've always been in the top ten of all the synods in the ELCA in terms of our contributions to world hunger and disaster response. We've always responded well to the needs around us. But not all of us have responded well to speaking Jesus. 
to inviting others to come and know him as we know him. I'll confess to you, I don't. I haven't been very good about that. Occasionally, I'll invite someone to worship, and occasionally, I will invite someone to know a little bit more about my Lord and Savior, but what, what holds me back? Why am I hesitant or frightened or embarrassed to be able to talk about the one that I love so much? Now, there's this commercial for the Good Foot Store or Good Feet Store, and I'm not saying that works or it doesn't work or anything like that. I'm just saying the commercial is the woman says that she helped someone who had plantar fasciitis for 30 years. So we know it's not Phil Nicholson, because Nicholson, it's been for 30 years, but she's able to take away his pain. And she says at the end of the commercial, who wouldn't want to go home and talk about that? So we come Sunday after Sunday and we get our sins forgiven, we get healed and we get nourished and we get faith enlivened again. We go from hope, I mean from despair to hope, from darkness to life, and who wouldn't want to talk about that? Apparently Lutherans. <laughs> so what what holds us back? I can only say about myself is that I, I'm just sometimes afraid and I, I think it is that I know what I'm really going to be inviting them to is not just good music or good programs or spirited fellowship but what I'm really inviting them to is the cross and who wants to hear the words come and die and I'm afraid I will not be listened to that I will be cast aside I'm also a little skeptical in this world that people will pay put any stock in me saying to them that the one who did die was raised from death to life again. Sometimes I'm not sure I put a lot of stock in that. That's human to say I don't believe this stuff. So if I don't believe it, how am I going to invite others into that belief? It's a struggle that I have and I'm sure that most of you have similar struggles along those lines. How do we become people who testify to the faith that is in us, who testify to the hope that we have, who share the peace that has been given us. We do not know how, but the Holy Spirit does. And again, that's why we come here Sunday after Sunday, because the Holy Spirit descends upon us. And it doesn't fly away, but it remains with us and it goes with us where we go to give us the strength, to give us the courage, to give us the love and the knowledge of Jesus that would impel and empower, that would equip and encourage us to make Christ known. It's why we need the community. As I said at the beginning, the mission statement is empowering, equipping, equipping and encouraging each other to make Christ known. We need the community to strengthen us and to support us and to walk with us in our journey so that through the power of the Holy Spirit we find the courage that we might otherwise never know we had. And I believe we have it. I believe that it is in each of us because we are children of God. We have been redeemed. We have been snatched from the devil's grasp. We have had our sins forgiven. We have been raised to newness of life. We are baptized sons and daughters of the Most High God who raises the dead to life, who brings light into darkness, who forgives sins, and whose love endures forever. We belong to that God, and I know that we in that God have the power to do and the courage to do what we are called to do. And so we come every week confessing we haven't known Jesus well enough or bravely enough to confess him, but Lord, help me. And Sunday after Sunday, that's exactly what happens. What is more important than how much we know Jesus is how much Jesus knows us. Jesus knows us inside out. He knows us from the very beginning and knows us to the very end. Jesus knows us well and loves us anyway. Jesus knows us well and calls us brothers and sisters. Jesus knows us well and walks with us in our journey. And that's the other part, walking with us. That's the other part of making Christ known. I used to just think, Making Christ known meant tell others about Jesus. 
But it's not just telling them about Jesus. Making Christ known is to say, look, there he is in the midst of you. There is Jesus where you never expected him. There is Jesus and you didn't even know it. Like the, disciple, or like the uh, people in the parable in the, Ma- in the Gospel of Matthew. When did we see you hungry or naked or in prison? When did we clothe you? They didn't know. They didn't see. So making Christ known is, is letting people know that Jesus isn't waiting for you and me to bring Jesus to them. Jesus is already there. Jesus is out the door on Sunday morning before we are. Jesus has left the building, in other words. The dismissal at the end is Jesus has left the the building. So go and serve, go and follow. But first, first, come and see. Come and see at the foot of the cross who it is that you are following. Come and see the love that Jesus has for you and for all the world. Come and have your sins forgiven and your faith strengthened and your brokenness healed. Come and know that even in the, in the midst of what you feel you cannot face with courage, Jesus faces it with you. Come and know that your darkness will be a place where the light of Christ can and will shine. Come to the altar where the Lamb of God is broken again for you and me. Come to the altar where the Lamb of God is once again poured out for you and for me. Come again and taste and see And know how good God is in Jesus Christ for you and for me and for all the world. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.